So I decided to make a video about Pluto and Aquarius, how that can manifest. Um, so first off, just to give a brief overview of the situation, Pluto represents the underworld, change, um, power, all those things. And um, ever since 2008, Pluto has been in the sign of Capricorn. But just to give you a brief understanding of how long it takes for Pluto to travel throughout all the signs, all 12 signs, Pluto, since the last time um, was in Aquarius, was 225 years ago. So it takes quite a bit of time for it to, like, go throughout the whole entire zodiac wheel. But um, anyways, but it being in the, for it to move into the sign of Aquarius, Aquarius is a fixed sign. Aquarius also represents humanitarianism, service, um, community. Aquarius can also represent radical changes, um, very unpredictable nature as well. Eccentricities, a lot of, it could be chaotic. So there's two sides to the sign and it's a fixed sign. So when a sign is fixed, it just means that it's more stubborn, more set in its ways. Which is super interesting, the fact that Aquarius being one of the most unpredictable signs out of all the zodiac is a fixed sign because normally if something is fixed and set in its ways, how could it be predictable? It's, is it predictably unpredictable? I don't know. Um, so yeah, named, um, going back to Pluto though, in description of it. So Pluto, named for the maiden-snatching, shadow-dwelling god of the underworld. Yes, Pluto or Hades, right? So Hades, we all know very well. And I always think about that story, that um, Greek mythology story of Hades capturing Persephone because he was like obsessed with her or something like that. She was so pure and beautiful. They actually went in... Um, Aquarius on March 23rd so it's already been in there and it'll stay there till um, June 11th after June 11th um, it'll go back to Capricorn so it's a slow process of before its permanent state and um, so it'll only be Pluto and Aquarius will only be for three months in the year of 2023 then um, it'll go back into Capricorn and then um, January 20th, 2024 through September 1st, 2024, it will be in Aquarius again. Then it'll go out and back, retrograde back into Capricorn. And then November 19th, 2024 through March 8th, 2043. So, yeah, yeah. Um, Anyways, so for three months, <clears throat> it kind of just gives you a little, it gives a little taste of what it will be like once, like slowly but surely you get a little taste here and there to prepare yourself for what's to come basically is what it's like, um, which I think is good because no one wants to have this huge, like, you don't want to like go for an ice bath or maybe you do, but it's like a total shock all at once. They just want to slowly progress to get used to the new energies and such. So, um, but a couple other things that I wanted to bring up about this is that, um, so like I was saying, there's a good side of the Pluto and Aquarius energy is what it could bring out is, um, the community coming together and working together as a whole to um, raise the vibe of the collective and just take down the corrupt establishments um, and like a revolution, but, you know, just to basically make it more, more free and more uh, equal. But... There's also a dark side to that, and I would probably use a description of 
like uh, Skynet, Terminator type of stuff. Because um, Aquarius also represents like, um, you know, information, AI, innovation, all that kind of stuff. And with Pluto going into the sign of Aquarius, it could manifest a kind of theme of, you know, AI taking over, um, you know, us kind of basically merging with uh, machines. <laughs> and we've already kind of seen that, right? And my son is uh, pounding on his door. So hold on one second. Okay, so... Um, where was I? <laughs> I forgot where my place was. Um, oh, yes, I was talking about the dark manifestations of Pluto and Aquarius. So it's like a Terminator, um, AI taking over, you know, um, everyone being avatars and living in their avatar and not actually moving, you know, they're just like in a, a coffin that's like, like a, like a keeping them alive or whatever. Anyway, uh, hold on a second. Anywho. Okay. So where do I leave off now? Uh, oh yeah. I was going to bring up the thing about, um, anyone with their sun sign in Aquarius. This is just, um, this is just a fun little thing I found. And since my son is in Aquarius, I figured I would add it in. But honestly, okay, let me just say it first. Aquarius people may find a new job opportunity, may start a new occupation. This year would be beneficial for the people who belong to Aquarius sun sign. All the desired wishes would be fulfilled this year. Yeah, the talk about toxic optimism. I'm not saying that can't happen, okay? Because I don't want to manifest bad things. However, I will say this. We are so much more than our sun signs. And it also depends on where your sun is placed, what house it is placed in. My sun sign is placed in my sixth house. Um, and then I have Mercury in Aquarius that's in my seventh house. It could be be a good manifesting thing for me but I mean you know it just really depends because it goes off of like you have to really take into consideration of all the other aspects in your chart and um yeah so just kind of make sure you keep that in mind um if you want to figure those things out I mean definitely look into your your own chart to find out more of how it's going to affect you personally. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I want to say. So yeah, just prepare for, for this new era that we're about to go in. Are we in the age of Aquarius? Well, we are in the birthing canal right now, but she is peaking. That was very cheesy. Anyways, all right, take care.